welcome to Basketball Talk Pro. My name is Ron Ecker. I'd like to start today uh, talking to some of the visitors uh, to these uh, videos that are not part of Basketball Talk Pro. Uh, I have found out from Google's analytics that uh, a third of our viewership uh, comes uh, from watching it on YouTube. Now I have no choice uh, if I'm to make, I have to make those videos on YouTube public uh, in order for them to embed on this uh, website and to be saved uh, in the archives. And that's fine. Uh, as many people who want to watch uh, uh, this basketball uh, video thing, uh, the better. But I would ask those visitors that come through YouTube and watch it on YouTube uh, to consider coming to our website, which is www.basketballtalkpro, all one word, dot com. Uh, you have some advantages and no disadvantages. The website is free. Uh, we do promote some products once in a while, but not a, uh, not a high-powered cell or anything like that. Uh, but your advantage is that you will go on our list if you uh, sign in, there's a little place there. All we ask is your name and your email. And uh, when you're on that list, uh, you will get an email every uh, new video that comes up. And with a short explanation of it. And a place that you can click uh, on a link that will take you directly uh, to the video on, uh, one, uh, on our website. Uh, it's just a better connection. I'd like to have uh, a more of a connection to people rather than just coming in and out of uh, a video. Uh, I think it will be to your advantage also. You don't need to search around. Uh, you, you'll know uh, when a new video comes on and you can go right to it without any uh, interference. Well, today is another milestone. These milestones just keep piling up and they're coming fast, it seems like to me. This is a 150th uh, video that we have, um, we have done. Uh, and uh, as, you, as we go through these, we, you know, we tr we've covered a lot of area uh, in coaching. I try to keep everything in, in my mind that this is a coach's training tool that they can use. Uh, and so we kind of vary the, the subjects. Um, some of you are not real interested in, uh, in the, uh, the, the type of subjects that talk about personal development, philosophy type of thing. Uh, more interest in um, drills and that sort of thing. I understand that. Uh, but I also understand something else. You're going down the wrong road. You have to take care of yourself first. Trust me. You're going to have a very short and unhappy career. Take care of yourself. Build yourself. Uh, build your, your uh, skills and in, in your craft. These are important, very important items. And uh, I'm going to t talk to you about one of them. I, I can't uh, do this video uh, thing I'm doing uh, I'm trying to be popular uh, or entertain. Uh, I have a mission and it is to help coaches uh, to provide them with kind of a mentorship uh, to help them learn how to be a coach, which incorporates many, many uh, avenues. Uh, not only, uh, to me, the easiest part is learning drills and offenses, though you need skill in that also. So I'm going to start today with sharing a, a story with you, which, you know, I like to do with you, with you um, because in each story uh, means something. If you look, see this book, if you can see it, it has no cover. I, I got this book 32 years ago. 
and uh, I've been uh, hang on to it. And I, I actually I don't think there was a cover on it when I got it. Uh, it's called the Three Pillars of Zen. But listen to this uh, story. It highlights what I want to talk to you about. One day, a man of the people said to Zen Master Aiku, Master, will you please write for me some maxims of the highest wisdom? Aiku immediately took the brush and wrote the word attention. Is that all? asked the man. Will you not add something more? Aiku then wrote twice, running, attention, attention. Well, remarked the man rather irritably, I really don't see much depth or subtlety in what you have just written. Then Aiku wrote the same word three times running, attention, attention, attention. Half angered, the man demanded, what does that word attention mean anyway? And Aiku answered gently, attention means attention. And that's what I want to talk to you today about. I don't think a coach can really uh, approach uh, any type of uh, expertise in this field without learning, if he doesn't have it already and hardly anybody does, how to concentrate. If you remember, it's one of the seven qualities that I, ta I, I took as a coach, that I proposed as uh, a coach. <coughs> but I want to go into it, I want to reach out a little bit more on it. Um, first of all, let me define concentration, which is what he's talking about with attention. Um, this is a dictionary definition, but it fits. Ability to give your attention, that word again, or thought to a single objective or activity. <coughs> I'm sorry. A single objective or activity. Not all kinds of things uh, at once. But as we talked about in, in uh, Coach Jackson uh, sent a paragraph that he wanted you to hear, and I read it uh, to you. Uh, it was about this very thing, of, of, of a, being able to uh, attach yourself to uh, a single object instead of all the things that are going through your mind. Uh, there's, there's so much distraction uh, in our world. Uh, well, it has been forever. There's so many forms of, of distraction. And I'm going to hit on a couple of them, and I, I'm hoping, hopeful that maybe uh, you will give some thought to them uh, and arrange them in your life, uh, and in some case omit them from your life. Uh, here's some things I see. When I was in China, I went out to dinner one night. It was a nice restaurant close to where I live. Uh, it was a beautiful day, it was Saturday night. And a boy and a girl walked in, very nicely dressed, both of them attractive people. They got their table. Their table happened to be almost directly at an angle uh, that I could, you know, I, my eyes couldn't hardly help but watch them. They came in, sat down, and immediately each one of them pulled out their phone and started to do whatever, I don't know, probably play games. They never talked. They just focused on that phone. The waitress came and uh, took their order. They ordered and went right back to the phones. They ate their meal, the phone right next to them on the table. Uh, and, and when they left, I thought they spent a beautiful evening, two beautiful people, in a nice setting, spending a lot of money on that dinner, and never talked, never had a nice thing to say or a subject to bring up. 
I was just amazed at that, but I see it all the time. How many times are you talking to somebody and their, their vision is on their phone, on their knee, uh, instead of you? And they give you this, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, please, put your phone away when you're talking to somebody. Look them right in the eye and listen to what they're saying. Listen to them carefully. Ask them questions. Uh, it's rude. This is the rudest thing. Happens to me a lot. I have to tell people, put your phone away. I want to talk to you. Uh, and you should do the same. You're in the environment you work in. So many people work in, uh, with the TV on. Uh, or radio on, uh, re reading one thing, working on something else, their eyes are on their phone. Control your environment. At least give yourself some time each day that the TV is off, the phone is off, the radio is off, and be able to focus on something that's important to you. You can't do that with three things going on at once. Another example of that is, how many of you drive a car down the road, uh, the radio on, and thinking of things completely uh, away from what you're doing? Driving a car is a dangerous thing. It can kill you. Uh, and yet, you pay no attention to it music is blaring and you pay no attention to that. Your mind is someplace else. Just see if you don't do that. Just see if that doesn't happen. Uh, turn the radio off. Uh, turn your mind off. Concentrate. Take it. Just try it. Just spend five minutes paying attention to your driving and what's around you. And you're going to find there's a beautiful world out there around you. All kinds of wonderful things. You're going to see a gas station that you didn't even know was there. This is the first time and you're going to be surprised. But the gas station's been there 22 years. Uh, you just never gave yourself a chance to see it. TV, radio are two really distractive things. You can say, can you get along without those in your life? Of course you can. My daughter and my wife watch TV all the time. One day I just happened to mention that uh, I used to like a TV show. My daughter was uh, actually shocked. She said, Dad, was there? did you used to watch TV? And I said, yeah. But when I quit watching it, I found a whole new world. I had time to do all kinds of things. I had taken, I had omitted something from my life that was not necessary. Uh, in fact, I had no, no uh, value at all other than just having entertainment come rushing over you. Uh, and instead, those hours were spent on things that were meaningful. Could be reading a good book, could be doing uh, film work, it could be doing uh, a number of things. It, uh, it just opened up my life. I would never go back to watching uh, TV. Uh, another place you see it is these Wi-Fi rooms. Uh, there's one very close to me, Panera it's called. I like their food. I like to go in there. I like to have meetings with people. When I'm in there, a lot of times by myself, I look around. There's people working on their computers, uh, phones, etc. And I, I wonder, why do you have to come to a restaurant? Uh, why can't you do this at home where it's quiet and you can really focus? Instead, they're constantly disrupted. Uh, I think it's just that people need to be around people. Or maybe they just like to show how they're working. Hotel lobbies are the same. I see them all the time. you got a nice room upstairs and they're sitting down in the lobby doing their work. Uh, 
go up to your room, go back home, and you find, shut everything off, and you find your work goes much faster and much easier. But your thoughts are probably the biggest distraction. You must learn to control your thoughts. Uh, you must learn to be able to focus on that object, whatever it is. As coaches, we have to have that skill. If you can't do it, uh, it's going to eventually, uh, it's going to eventually make this career a short one. You have to be able to do it, and it's not easy to learn. One of the places that I see intense concentration on a single object is players. There are certain players, the great players, who have that ability. And now maybe they didn't uh, go out to learn it, to put it into their life. I'm going to. If, if, if everybody has this problem of uh, of not being able to control their thoughts, crazy uh, things. But you take Kobe Bryant, uh, his intense uh, attention on just the single thing he's doing at the time is remarkable. He could not have did that 81 points without it. Uh, he lost himself in, the, in his, uh, in his in intensity on what he was doing. Michael Jordan. You think he made all those shots with technique uh, or skill? He made them with his mind. The, he, all he was thinking at the time was put the ball in the basket. Simple. Single. Uh, and his, he gave no thought to the crowd, to the referees, to the, to the situation. His thought was on doing it and getting it done. Uh, and he did. There's a player uh, that has a little different look at it. Uh, his name is Bill Bradley. In his book he talks about it. Bill Bradley was an outstanding uh, student uh, and won a, a terrific award. I think it was a Rhodes Scholarship. Uh, and but while he was at Princeton, uh, he took courses that were very demanding. Uh, he did a lot of studying, a lot of time. But listen to this. He would go play a game at Princeton uh, and, and win the game, maybe have 30 points, walk out of the locker room and go directly to the library. And he was able to completely keep the thoughts of that game out of his mind and focus on the book he was reading or studying. Remarkable. I don't know how he could uh, do that. Uh, your thoughts always come back to that game. Well, he could keep them out. So, the other place is coaches. Um, <coughs> I can only give you one example of that. There are others, I'm sure. Um, but right now, the only example I see of a, of a man who uh, has intense focus uh, while the game is going on and keeps his mind away from the media, away from the crowd, away from what people are going to think about him, away from the dangers and the pressure. It's Popovich at San Antonio. Watch him in a game. Study him. You're going to see a man that calmly, most of the time, uh, keeps his attention exactly where it should be, and that's on what is happening right now in the game. Well, <coughs> I, ha I have to leave you with one thing. How do you do this? How do you learn to... You, you will not... You must have an exercise in order to come close to attaining this kind of attention to what you're doing. You can't do it any other way. And so I, I think your, your, your need is to find that, that uh, activity. You have to practice it. Uh, I don't care how you do it. Uh, there's other ways. 
I do it uh, by the Zen method. Uh, Zen is a tremendous um, in their in their approach to mind control, um, and <coughs> this book that I just showed you is I looked and it's still available on Amazon. It's an older book, but if you want to learn how to concentrate, get this book and put your mind to it. Uh, it's not go going to be easy. Uh, of course, you can. You know, you can Google concentration. You're going to come up with a lot of, a lot of um, articles and that sort of thing. Be careful of that. Some of those people are just, uh, uh, you know, writing something. They they uh, may not be the experts they claim, and that's why I don't want to try to direct you. I'm no expert either, but I do know you need this. You need this type of mental control. Um, you can Google concentration. Uh, you can uh, Google meditation. You can go Google Zen. And you're going to come up with things that you can, where you can go. My advice is, if I can give you that, is use books. Uh, go to books. Uh, even there, be somewhat careful. But if you, the people who write books have to put a lot more into it. Uh, and so, uh, <coughs> excuse me, um, I'd have to, I think it's the best place. Whatever, it's going to take tremendous effort. Get that activity, get that exercise, spend five, ten minutes a day working hard at this. Uh, you'll see things, you, you'll see yourself change. If you're an extrovert, if you do this over the years, you become an introvert. More will be coming from inside of you uh, than from outside of you. More of your, uh, your uh, knowledge and, and what you uh, want to attain will come from inside rather than outside. So that's it for today. Uh, don't overlook this. Uh, put it, this is something you've got to put into your life. It, it's not easy, I understand. But as you approach it and study it and work with it, you will find a way to do it. So, we'll see you next time. This is 150. It'll go in the archive in a, in a short time. Uh, but we look forward to being seeing you. Thank you.